Like, it'll thaw, and all the water will drip into the light bulb, and it would, like, explode. But, okay, so my lab was on creating a lava lamp. Uh, but I didn't think that would be very creative if I just, like, built a lava lamp, because people have been building those for years. So I thought, like, so a regular lava lamp works. You have paraffin wax at the bottom of a lava lamp, and water like throughout it and as the lamp gets hotter the wax rises uh, and it like kind of rises in these blobs and so I thought well what if you take something that's less dense than water and cool it to the point where it like drops uh, and I also wanted to understand like the mathematics of it because I know it can be explained through like thermodynamics and so I hypothesized that if I am to freeze a container with water and vegetable oil in it, then the vegetable oil will sink beneath the water uh, because its density will be greater than that of the water. Uh, I used just regular vegetable oil, probably from Schnucks, uh, water from my sink, a uh, glass container. I already had that, so that was convenient. And like a freezer, and some food coloring, green food coloring. I also set up an experiment so that I could collect some data on the topic where I took two containers and filled them up with the same amount of oil and water, and then I measured the temperatures of the liquids like at that moment, and then I placed them in a freezer for the same amount of time, and then uh, I also took their uh, volumes at the original temperature, and then af after I put it in the freezer, I collected their volumes again so that I could calculate the coefficient of apparent expansion. So to, to do this lab, you know, we had to understand thermodynamics tell us that um, as things get hotter, um, they expand often. As things get cooler, they contract. There are exceptions, but uh, in general. And Archimedes' principle states that things of a higher density will sink to the bottom of things with a lower density. Uh, the density of water is interesting. I have a thing on the next slide that will kind of explain that. Uh, the coefficient of apparent expansion is represented by A there. And what you do is you take the change in volumes of a liquid and divide it by the original volume times the change in temperature uh, of the time period where it changed the volume. And so this is an image that represents the density of water at different temperatures. And so at 4 degrees Celsius, it's at its maximum density. And you know, since I wanted to, obviously, if you get super hot and stuff, it'll um, contract like more, uh, but I wanted to make it cold. So you have to get it past 4 degrees Celsius before it starts to contract again. Or, er, yeah, expand. And so to do this, I poured water in there, like um, 750 milliliters. And then, like, five drops of green food coloring. And then I poured olive oil, or vegetable oil, on, onto that as well. And then I told you guys about the thing I did with the bowls. And so, for the bowls, I got this data. Um, that's the original uh, volumes, uh, half a liter. And then after they were frozen, those were the final volumes. So the oil contracted and the water expanded. And granted, it's by very little, which kind of has to do with how the lab worked. And so I took the, um, the change in volume right there and the change in temperature, which I measured. And with that, I was able to calculate by the equation I showed you earlier, the coefficient of apparent expansion. And for oil, I calculated 
five point seven uh, times ten to the neg to the fourth. And for this, for water, it was one point zero four times ten to the negative fourth. And so, for air, I found um, I found this website with uh, coefficient of apparent expansions of like all these different uh, chemicals and liquids and stuff. Uh, sources of error, I was just using like a thermometer that we had and it probably wasn't that great. And um, I was also measuring it using like Tupperware, which is probably not the most accurate uh, measure of volume. And uh, so for the coefficient of water, the one that I calculated with my data, I had 50% error, so it was like, I believe it was twice of what it should have been. Uh, but for oil, I got 18% error, so it was pretty close to what it should have been by my data, so I was pretty happy with that. Uh, so in conclusion, a lot of this lab was observation. So like, you have to look very closely because there's a lot of things going on. Um, there is the oil, the water, and there's even a little bit of air in there. And so you can think you're looking at one thing and be totally wrong. But um, like there's all, all this stuff in the middle, this is just cracks in the ice from the water. And all this at the top is the vegetable oil, which I thought would have been like in here. Uh, but what I found with my first trial was that the vegetable oil kind of came down the sides and the water like froze into the middle and up, which was kind of interesting. And it kind of has to do with the idea that um, like when you're, when you're cooking food, you have to make sure that the way you make sure that it's all the way cooked is by looking at the middle. And um, the, the middle of the water seemed to have frozen first. Uh, and on the outside was still cold water, and so I think the oil was able to slip down because it was next to cold water, and obviously it like, couldn't go through the ice, which was the main problem. Like, it was obstructed by the ice, but it was still able to travel, travel within the cold water. And another thing that's really interesting is when it was more frozen, it was easier to see, but all of the food dye kind of came to the very bottom in like an egg shape. Uh, and that's because when, I guess, that froze, it um, fell, it became more dense than the water and the oil, and went completely to the bottom. And so as this will thaw, um, the food dye will begin to mix in with the water more, and any oil that has come down, a lot of where the oil meets the water, it's kind of like looking at a mountain range, a lot, it's like, you know, it can't mix, but it's trying to get past each other. And so as it'll thaw, all of the dye will mix back in with the water, and all of the oil will more uh, fluidly gather at the top. Uh, in the future, so this was like something I did at my house, obviously. And real lava lamps are built in factories using lots of science. And something that's a part of that is certain chemicals that are put into the wax of real lava lamps act, um, they help the wax expand more and like in a more uniform shape. And obviously, like I didn't really have access to many chemicals like that. Um, but I was glad to uh, understand the coefficient of apparent expansion and kind of delve into thermodynamics a little more, which we didn't cover an AP1, but I think it's pretty cool. And that's about it. How does the um, freezing temperature of oil compare to water? The oil's not frozen yet. I know that. So, like, it doesn't freeze at all? Not. Um, I cooled. I cooled the entire fuselage to about negative four degrees Celsius. And at that point, the oil was not frozen, but the water was. 
So it's less than that. Okay. Any other questions? Cool. Any tips or pieces of advice that you'd give to someone trying to make a lava lamp? Well, the thing with this, a lot of times, if you like freeze uh, a can of soda or something on accident, uh, or a bottle of soda, say, uh, when you're like trying to thaw it out, it'll like break the glass will. So at some point, this may break today, which is why I really need to present. And so you have to be careful with like freezing and thawing the glass. Uh, also, I would say it's better to, I wish I could have like individually studied, I wish I would have individually studied how the oil heats up and cools and expands like on its own. And then like if I try like adding other stuff to the oil that would mix in with it, um, you could really get more exact results that way. That's all.